Greetings, I'm John Spirit. I've done a lot between episodes, and I think we're going to be able to make our first micro miner today, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. Take that statement about a micro miner with a grain of salt. Anyway, I made conductive iron wires, and my biggest project was to change up my circuit system so it did not rely on the Enter I.O. bus, but only on interfaces. To supply sodium hydroxide dust, I basically just added it to the drawers. To supply bones, I gave them a drawer in the DML system. To supply gallium plates, I actually ended up adding them to this drawer system, and then giving it a blue insert with a filter on gallium plates, and then extracting gallium plates from this drawer, and I'm now using a level emitter to control these machines, instead of the original redstone upgrade from the drawer. Rather than supplying CPUs directly, I'm actually supplying silicon wafers and precision laser engraving them into CPU wafers and cutting them in this area. And the reason for that is because CPUs are only used for refined circuits and microcircuits and nothing else. The one problem is that CPU wafers are used for nano CPU wafers and qubit CPU wafers eventually, and nano CPUs are used for nano circuits, so that's something else that they're going to be used for, but I'll tackle that when I get there. All the CPU and wafer stuff is also gone from here. I've actually taken the silicon bools from this blast furnace, and I'm inserting them directly into an advanced cutting machine in a very complex and messy array of wires. Oh no. And I'm pulling those out on the purple line and sticking them into an interface so that they'll go into these drawers, which I've just added. It's like a general drawer system at this point. However, if I just let the wafers fill up the drawer system to completion, then eventually the wafers would get extracted into the interface and go nowhere, and stuff the interface so I couldn't put anything else into it. To fix that, I put a machine controller up top here, and I'm using another level emitter to check when there are at least 64 silicon wafers in the system, and when there aren't, cut them. Eventually I'll add lubricant, but I apparently have not hooked up my lubricant to the network. Additionally, I am no longer using this basic fluid extractor to turn redstone into molten redstone. That was silly. I am using an MV fluid extractor now, sticking redstone into it from this interface, and then pulling out the redstone fluid and putting it into the red alloy wire um, EBF. So that's about everything I've done so far. Um, in order to make these steel plated micro miners, I need to craft a bunch of stuff. Some of the more complicated things are steel heavy plating, which I'm going to need to compress using steel. The basic mining laser, which requires quartz and glass, which is why I'm going to make a better cobble works in a little bit. The thruster, which requires conduits, for which I need to do conduit binder composite, which is, incidentally, another reason that I'm making this cobble works and making it better. And a simpler, I'll need the ender shards with resonant crystals for resonating resonant crystals. I just need to shove those into a crafter. And probably, which is going to be the most difficult because it involves a lot of components that aren't needed by anything else, is the basic diesel generator, which is a big mess involving pistons and motors and LB machine holes and steel gears and tin cables, none of which I really need for anything other than this micro miner. Which is why I'm probably going to do something involving crafting cards. And so far, I'm supplying basically everything except the rubberized tin cables and the steel gears. In fact, let's add tin cables to this ME interface. Now, you'll notice I stacked another ME interface on top of the old one. It all gets hooked up because of the store controller, so the conductive iron pattern works pretty well. I want to put slime into this network and use it for rubber. So I'm going to take everything out of this advanced item filter and put it into this advanced big item filter. Much bigger. To smelt the slime into resin without using the electric furnace over there, I'm going to extract it from this interface with a level emitter depending on how much sticky resin is in the system. Excuse me, apparently it's called rubber and not sticky resin. The multi-smelter is working, and soon we'll have enough rubber in here for this level emitter to turn on. And it did! I partitioned this fluid storage cell on rubber and lubricant. I'll eventually add the lubricant, for now I'm just going to shove this into the drive. As this section of the base relies only on sulfur and to extract carbon from this carbon dioxide electrolyzer, I'm going to stick an interface here and then shove my rubber extraction devices over here. I also need to supply sulfur to this drawer. Careful, in the latest edition of Dev, this can kill. Luckily, I have not upgraded to that yet. Raw rubber pulp is only used for liquid rubber. So I'm going to set this robot arm to supply exact, precisely 9 raw rubber pulp to the advanced chemical reactor I'm about to place here, and boom, it works. This limited item filter now only has sulfur in it, I'll insert, and now I'm getting liquid rubber. Now, it takes the same amount of time to make a 16x tin cable as it does to make a 1x tin cable in an assembler. It is therefore much slower to create our 1x10 cables by just shoving them into an assembler, so what I'm going to do is actually solidify some rubber into plates. 
However, I do need to level limit the, the fluid and the rubber plates. All of a sudden, it seems like it might be better to turn rubber into rubber pulp using a centrifuge, because it's actually faster, and this extractor is moving freakishly slowly. We'll see. If I change it, I'll let you know. This redstone and filter will turn on only when certain input signals in the redstone network are on. So I'm going to set up a fluid level emitter for rubber and a level emitter for the rubber sheets. I'll put rubber sheets in this drawer that holds 1,024. This level emitter will emit when there is greater than 256 buckets of rubber, and this one when there are greater than 512 rubber sheets. This redstone and filter will be on purple and cyan. And this redstone conduit for the rubber sheets will be set to cyan. This advanced chemical reactor will auto-output rubber up top so that it fills up this fluid solidifier. This fluid solidifier will extract on purple, always active, so that it flows into this ME interface and gets put into the system with rubber plates in it. The chemical reactor will constantly be extracting rubber on purple until it also fills up to 256 buckets. Right now we're at 9, so that's going to take a while. So now we have rubber for all the tin cables. I already have wrought iron plates, the fine copper wires, iron rods, and I need to make magnetic iron rods, steel, which I'll eventually be able to extrude into a small steel gear, or alloy smelt slightly faster. So now it's time for the cobble works. To run an MV electrolyzer constantly, I need one glass every 0.44 seconds, or 2.24 glass per second. As you may recall, we get 2.5 sand per second from these maze raiders. But we also need clay from this system, and so therefore that's insufficiently quick. So what I'm going to do is double the number of macerators I have, MV rather than HV. You may note that this system doesn't use all of the production of clay, so I'll still have a lot of extra clay. I'm going to supply cobblestone using a cobblestone generator, or I've moved the cobblestone generator from over here to this drawer system. And because I've separated out the DML polymer clay setup so that it doesn't mess with the rest of my base, I do need to install an interface supplying different items to the setup. Those are cobble, sand, and ender pearls. This ME interface will supply cobblestone, and I'm going to filter it into the bottom macerator. It will also supply gravel, sand, glass, and clay, and I'm going to have these drawers, gravel, sand, quartz, and clay in a compacting drawer, which will give me access to small clay. I'll insert from the interface on purple, and insert into the drawers on blue. I'll insert gravel into this macerator on purple, and sand into the top macerator on purple, and then storage bus the drawer controller with a partition, which will give us access to gravel. Gravel will get inserted into the macerator, and sand is now getting put into the drawers. Let's get sand into the multi seltzer system to make glass. I could either add a new interface and put two item conduits on it to put two more outputs, or I could put two more outputs on the semi interface, but it gets a little more confusing, particularly since we have this conduit, which is part of the main network, and this conduit, which is part of a subnetwork. However, this subnetwork was made when we weren't doing an AE main network, and I realized that I could just do this entire system using an AE main network and have these level emitters access, well, the stuff that the main network is already accessing. So here's a solution. Remove the storage bus and connect it again. We already have a storage bus for the main network, and it looks like these are on. When there's more than 512 glass in the system, this level emitter will emit onto this conduit, and the conduit will start will stop extracting sand. And glass is now pouring into the system. And glass is in the interface, which means we can electrolyze it into quartz. Glass is now being inserted into this electrolyzer, and quartz is being extracted into the drawer. This interface will provide water to this chemical reactor, making clay from dust blocks. Dust will be extracted on the cyan channel and inserted into the relevant chemical reactor. And clay will be extracted on blue in order to enter the compacting drawer. Before I get electrocuted, I'm replacing these wires. Clay will get inserted into this macerator to make clay dust, and it will auto-output to the top. We'll insert into our interface on light gray so that we can extract all the items out of our clay dust electrolyzer. And then we'll become extremely sad, because cobblestone is now our bottleneck. Luckily, I have eight cobblestone generators here and a bronze ingot. Apparently, I forgot to install this for an eternity, but I can craft these eight cobblestone generators in bronze into a compact cobblestone generator, and hopefully this will solve all our problems. Let's find out. Right now, they look pretty solved. But until our sand fills up, which I really, really hope it does, we will not get a net gain on gravel, and we need a net gain on gravel in order to make conduit binder. Right now, we're getting a net gain on sand, thankfully. So let me give this a while, and i let you know if we get a net gain on gravel as well. If we do, then the last thing we'll do with this cobblestone generator today is to create conduit binder and smelt it into conduit binder. We totally did get a backlog, and everything is full. 
Let's now proceed to make, like, a billion mechanical crafters. Or, alright, as many as my meager supply of wood will afford, which is currently, like, 7? 21? I think what I'll do is make, like, 4 stacks of small steel gears and 4 stacks of resonating redstone crystals, and then just use them later. It's nice to be able to watch the sunrise without a billion trees between me and the sun. To make resonating redstone crystals, which we'll need for the conductive iron thrusters anyway, let's set up an alloy smelter for it. Ender shards are only really used for resonating redstone crystals. So I'm going to insert ender pearls into this mechanical craft I've just created, and then we'll make ender shards. Then we'll insert ender shards and mesonia crystals on the purple channel as well. This is a similar situation to when we were doing the one holy bus, it's just a smaller bus. We'll level limit this to when there are 512 resonating redstone crystals in the network, which I'm storing in these storage stores up here. And of course we'll extract on blue from the alloy smelter to get all the resonating redstone crystals into their home, which I'll probably need to add to the filter. Incidentally, however, due to the destruction of the holy bus, I do not need to have a filter on these drawers anymore, so I might remove that at some point once I'm sure the bus is dead. Dead. I will now proceed to filter this ME interface on 64 clay, and then I'll put a mechanical crafter on it. You may recall that the mechanical crafter can take items from adjacent inventories. Let's make sure that it turns off when it receives redstone, and then we'll put in the recipe for conduit binder composite, and when there's 64 conduit binder composite in the system, this redstone level emitter will turn off. Meanwhile, conduit binder will be extracted on the blue line into this drawer, and hopefully as soon as I give it a space in the drawer system, it'll start extracting. The autocrafter has been emptied out and is not working. Now we'll make sure 64 conduit binder composite gets supplied to the network, for the multi-smelter that is. We'll set up an item conduit filtered on conduit binder composite and active without signal. And now our multi-smelter is starting to run. I've given you these extract speed upgrades that I made earlier. And now we have conduit binder in the network. We are now close to ready to make most of these items. For example, we can now make the conductive iron energy conduits pretty easily. Also, I don't know how my audio quality just popped back in. The last thing I want to do this episode is make sure that refined and microcircuits are available to the network, which will require, gasp, more level emitters. I'm filtering each of these for 128 of each type of circuit. I'm slapping each type of circuit into this little circuit quote-unquote drawer I have here. We'll make this top interface insert on purple, and extract these circuits on purple always active. And we do see more microcircuits getting added to our network. It looks like it's just now stopped, and we should expect to see working disabled. Perfect. And once our refined circuits fill up to 128, the same thing should happen for this lower assembler. In the next episode, I hope to get steel-plated microminers. The major hurdle will be making basic diesel generators, as passively crafting every one of these components is a drag. However, I'm considering doing something where I actually active craft a couple of the components for basic diesel generators, particularly the piston, the motor, and the machine hole. Meanwhile, the gears which are needed for the electric piston and the main basic diesel generator, I will be passively crafting. And then, if we have time in that episode, we'll also start to passively send microminers. How exciting! Between this episode and that one, I'll update to the latest version of Dev, in which the titanium-plated microminer will lose two copper ore boxes and turn them into sphalerite. The more important result will be, I believe, some kind of smart item filter that will only insert specified numbers of different items by the recipes themselves, rather than by my specification. So if I slap some rock salt into a chest and use a smart item filter, it should never insert any more than two rock salt, so I don't get random extra stuff in my electrolyzer that I don't want. But anyway, I think we've made some significant progress on this long and arduous journey to get ourselves Tier 1 Microminers. One exciting result of this is that we'll have a bunch of titanium so that we can make EV assemblers, which will allow us to make the fourth and final Tier 3 circuit, Nano Circuits, which will introduce some slight new complexities to our processes. But, for now, that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.